I know my girlfriend is cheating. I've been with this girl for over a year. She is the first girl I've ever had unprotected s time with because I trusted her. But around June, I found a Cena Dom wrapper in the baseboard of my bed. I brought it up to her and she instantly had an excuse and didn't seem to be nervous and she is terrible at lying on the spot. So we moved on and forgot about it. Then in July I found a receipt for the cinema in my car. I didn't say anything though because I thought I'd wait until something else comes up so I have enough to confront her with. Mid to late June comes around and I was cleaning my car to go visit some family. I keep my car quite clean but this time there was a few papers and water bottles and such, just general rubbish. But when I was vacuuming the back floor I found two pieces of the corners of Cenodom wrappers. Now, I am a very reasonable guy. I don't get angry easily and I take all info on board before I get angry. She had been using my car every few days because the car that I bought for her with my own savings had a cracked head. So while I was paying for it to be fixed I was lending her my car. But rather than explode at her, I just put the pieces with the tickets and went about my day. My mum won two tickets to go to New Zealand and she gave them to me because she wasn't well enough to go by the expiration date. And I couldn't go because of work, so I gave them to my girlfriend to take a friend. I figured it would be the perfect opportunity to set something up to catch her in the act. Once she left I bought a bunch of cameras and microphones and had my friend a techie put them around the house and in my car. When she got back I had to go on a work trip for a few days. I've actually been down the street at my techie friend's house waiting for her to act up. Nothing happened for two days and the microphones in my car stopped working so all we had was the house. Then all of a sudden the camera in my room turned on and she was there with my childhood best friend. I hadn't spoken to him for over a year. The last time I saw him I drove him for 8 hours to go to his dad's funeral. I didn't ask for fuel money or expect anything in return. I even drove him back to Sydney for free. So me and my techie friend went back to my house at night and broke into his car by forcing the window down 1990s Ford with hand roll windows. We pushed it up the block and hid it behind an industrial building. Then we went back to his place and called her, we watched her pick up the phone while she was next to him. I pretended to be checking in on her and she sounded normal and lied straight to me. It was obvious that she was nervous and it just made me even angrier. We left her for the night and waited for this morning. The police were talking to my ex-best friend about his car and she had to drive him home over an hour to his house so when they left I had the locksmith change my front and back door locks and we dumped all her stuff in my ex-best friend's car. I even sold the car I bought her to the shop that was supposed to fix it. Update, not sure what to say. I'm a 20 year guy training to join the army and working a SED job. I recently lost my high school best friend. He committed suicide. Nobody expected it. Even me and I was with him every other day. We spoke about everything but obviously he was struggling with something internally. It hit me hard and I found it difficult to function normally because he was such an integral part of my adult life. My soon-to-be ex-girlfriend didn't come to the funeral or try to talk with me about him even though it's all I wanted to do. I recently found out she's been cheating on me with my best friend from childhood. I haven't said anything to her yet though. I work every day to provide for us. I bought her a car, clothes, furniture and even let her choose the house we would move into. I'm not rich by any means. I put bins together and drop them off. It's a city job and it's very hard but even though I'm exhausted every day, I do the cooking, cleaning, shopping and I pay all the bills. 
She works maybe four hours a week at a cafe and then sits at home doing nothing but complain about how terrible I am and that I'm never home. She's bleeding me dry and ducking my childhood best friend. I've been in and out of depression the last 18 months but I still do what I need to do. And yet she takes it all for granted. I just hit a point today and I honestly just want to get it over with. Everyone walks over me because I'm too nice to everyone. Everyone takes and takes and gives nothing back. Everyone just expects from me. And if I say no to something all of a sudden I'm the bad guy. I'm done being the nice, respectful guy everyone goes to for a handout. You can only push someone so far before they do something drastic. Maybe this is my breaking point. Redditor's Reactions Story 2 After Redditor 1, don't worry about people saying you're the bad guy, if they want, they will think anything they like about you, only you can say if you're bad or good, respect everyone, and if they don't respect you, just don't care about them, it took me really long to try doing this, and I still struggle, but whenever I see improvement it's really good. What's up with the army thing? Any expectations to join anytime soon? Op answer, thank you, and I would hope so. I just feel like I'm at a dead end with my progression toward the army. It's all I want to do but I don't see myself making any progress. It's just adding to everything. Redditor 2, come on bro, do what you think makes you happy, hope you get better. Redditor 3, look dude. A few years ago a childhood friend came to stay with me, my wife and children. While he was staying at ours he walked down the road and hung himself from a tree. It's about a one and a half minute walk from my house. And what he did hurt all the people who lived him. It traumatized me and nearly cost me my relationship with my wife and children. Although life might seem hard at the moment it will soon pass and you will feel happy again. Story 2, here's to the end of the worst decade of my life. 2011, wife had an affair. 2012, made a career ending mistake no I will not elaborate, but endangered some lives I was able to retire early, but hated how it went down. 2012, 2013, literally drunk unemployed and depressed. 2014, checked into a hospital for my deteriorating mental condition and suicidal thoughts. Wife calls me a piece of shit for it. 2015-2017, working, but crappy job and the wife is getting more and more hostile. 2018, finally got a real job, but was injured three months into it and had to stay at home. Still got a paycheck, but it was pretty awful. According to the wife, this makes me a terrible husband. The last six months of 2019, the toxic wife and I are done, I am making real money at job I love. I have opened myself up sexually in ways I never thought possible and am looking ahead feeling pretty good. Edit, I am getting some really wonderful responses kind of overwhelming, I want to thank all of you for the kind words and good wishes. I want to respond to all of individually, but it is starting to look like it would be an all-day thing and it is nigh. I hope all of you have a fantastic 2020. Update. I want to thank whoever awarded this. It means a lot to me. Update 2, for those that asked, she sounds awful in this, but the truth is that she was unhappy in our marriage and not good at dealing with it. She really isn't a bad person and she is an incredible mother to our kids. We are getting along much better now. Redditor's Reactions, Story 3 After. Redditor 1, first line wow, that ducking sucks. Next few lines Jesus, this guy has really had a ducking awful few years. Penultimate line wow, this guy can't catch a break, what the fuck, 
he's still with the wife. Last line nice? Good job, buddy, onwards and upwards. Welcome to the rest of your life. Enjoy it. Redditor 2, I am really happy for you that you stayed strong and that things got better. May this new decade bring you enjoyable adventures. Redditor 3, 2013, my little brother died, 28 years old. 2019, my mom died from cancer, 65 years old. The tens have, without question, been the worst decade of my life, but, 2012, graduated as a teacher and got a teaching job. 2014, met my future wife. 2016, got married and got a better teaching job. 2018, my son was born. So, it's also been the best decade in my life. The bad things will however always overshadow the positive. Op answer, don't let them. They will always be there and should, but I am so grateful for what I have. I can't let the horrible things overwhelm me anymore and I'm focusing on what has gone right. You should be too. Story 3, discovered my wife is having an affair tonight. Family dinner for Christmas. She opens a snap from her lover without thinking I would see the message. Not realizing I was standing behind her while she was sitting down at the table. The message said Merry Christmas. Can't wait to see you with a kissing emoji. When she inevitably left her phone laying around I opened her Snapchat up. Snapped a photo of myself. Put it on her story. Left it with the same text as her lover sent her. Merry Christmas. Can't wait to see you with the kissing emoji. My wife and her lover now know that I know. It's been fun watching her squirm through the family get together. Sadly I'm a city person too. I was not upset at her affair. I'm just more upset at the lack of discretion around this time of year. The women I am having affairs with understand we should not try to contact each other through the holidays. It's in poor taste. Story 4, I'm 32 meters trying to set boundaries with 34 f unhealthy jealous spouse and she refuses to budge. Been married for a few months and there have been rocky moments where my wife's attitude would turn on a dime. She was dealing with depression anxiety and probably has a fear of abandonment from her past relationships too. Her jealousy has led to her accusing me of looking for any sexual relationship outside of marriage and forcing me to change the default Google Assistant to a male voice. The past few days ago she saw a friend's suggestion on Facebook and flipped out saying I was searching for her because she was a past ex or romantic interest. The Facebook suggestion turned out to be an old group partner for a four-person project from undergrad. This is not the first time that she accused me of seeing or lusting after someone else. She also accused me of going after someone at work, one of my trainers. It has come to the point that I avoid bringing up certain topics to avoid her going into an angry fit. I know with the standard advice that if she is being so accusatory that she could be projecting her guilt of cheating on me, and I think she might have a bipolar disorder with a lot of the symptoms. I know that a friend that she still talks to almost proposed to her too. After a fight a few nights ago she said it didn't matter what I thought if she sent him a picture of her TTS. She is also on Effexor and when it comes close for her next dose she gets more jealous and irrational. From a cursory search this jealousy is very unhealthy and their fear of not wanting to be abandoned makes them double down on the accusations or suspicions. For the past few months she has been throwing out the threat of leaving me or divorce so often that when she says it now it doesn't hurt at all. When I told her one time to leave she doubled down on me coming home to make up. I don't have much experience in relationships where there is a difficult mental health issue such as bipolar. I've unsuccessfully tried to set boundaries before but she scoffs at them. 
I feel sorry for the things she had to go through and only want the best but it feels like in this marriage I have given 90% in making things happen and she has been coasting in the background, smoking, drinking, and not focusing on helping out financially. I'm not allowed to go out for friends, my time away is constantly questioned and my opinions and interests are disregarded when she just wants me nearby. I don't know what I can salvage but I'm looking for advice on how to give reasonable expectations to a person when they are being unreasonable. Note, my initial responses will be short after an hour since I'm expected to be back. Update I'm 32 meters trying to set boundaries with 34F unhealthy jealous spouse and she refuses to budge. Wife was extremely jealous one night and said I had wandering eyes when I can barely see without my glasses that she broke. Ended up sending me to the ER and she was arrested. She is concerned about what I need to do to correct her predicament when she was the one that threw the blows. Today was one of the pre-trial court hearings. She was upset all night last night, saying it was my fault that she was in this situation of a felony for assaulting me and that her stress was all of my fault. She scoffed at the deal that the state was offering saying it was a death sentence for her career and our marriage. It was my understanding that a North Carolina order would be in place while classes are being completed but would be lifted after. She was under the impression that it would last through her probation. The night prior she was upset that I was doing research on marriage counseling, saying I was thinking we were too far gone even when we talked about finding a counselor a few days before. Late nights early morning she gets more paranoid as her medication wears off effects her and I try to bear her verbal assaults trying to calm her down. Having a feeling a split was imminent I packed my clothes and belongings from the place she was staying at during her North Carolina order period while she was finishing up at court. When she got out we had another argument about what she said I needed to do to fix her situation, saying I need to spend more money on two apartments, so she isn't stuck with her friend. To put her jealousy into perspective, she was uncomfortable with me having the default female Google Assistant that she demanded I change it to a male voice. Also she says I have wandering eyes, accusing me of checking out any woman that is anywhere and constantly questioning me if I am cheating on her. She has no respect for the privacy of my phone and searches through it, deleting so past evidence of her jealousy breaking my glasses and refuses me to search through her own phone trying to point out the one-sidedness of her actions. When I called her out on her jealousy of the default Google voice, she demanded that I leave, that I had no respect for her friend's house and that I had no place to argue there. After I decided to put out feelers for a divorce attorney and have started organizing my notes evidence of her financial, physical, and emotional abuse over the course of our marriage. I have a therapist I have been seeing about some of this going on and have another appointment tomorrow. It's depressing that someone that I love would say do things to hurt me just because of a paranoia or unhealthy jealousy. I've tried getting her the mental health help that she needs but she refuses to take the steps and initiative after getting her the information. My mom recommended me going no contact after my talking with her today and after she mentioned that my wife called her the other day, ranting about me and my faults as a husband. I have no friends locally and I feel like with the internet that the anonymity and the disconnect with personal relationship provides a cathartic relief for my situation. Edit, thank you everyone for your support. It means a lot to me since I generally feel unnoticed or cared about by anyone. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1, she told me to leave. Bruh. Take her advice and go. You're in an emotionally and physically abusive relationship. There's no coming back from this asset. As long as you're with her you'll never be happy. Op answer, the best time to leave was months years. Ago. The second best time is now. Redditor 2, your mom is right. You need to go no contact. 
You cannot fix this woman. You need to stop trying. For your own safety. She scoffed at the deal that the state was offering saying it was a death sentence for her career and our marriage. It should be. Felony DV, is no ducking joke. She had to have really hurt you to get charged with a felony esp since it's far less likely for the woman to be arrested, sorry not sorry, it's the truth. Next time she will KLL you. You need to stay away from her. You sound like a very compassionate person. I know you feel bad about her mental health struggles. Here's the thing. Mental illness is not an excuse for abuse. She's an abuser. She feels no remorse for what she's done. I have a serious physical illness, and mental illness. I have never treated my husband this way. This is not okay. I don't care what her diagnosis is. I bet she controls herself at work. She is choosing not to control herself at home. And you cannot manage her mental illness for her. That's her job. Do not take her calls. Do not listen to her demands is she joking. She wants you to pay for an apartment for her after she violently assaulted you. No contact. Talk only to your attorney. Testify against her. She deserves consequences for her actions. This marriage needs to be over. There's no going back from this. At least there shouldn't be. She accepts zero responsibility for her actions. Her mental illness isn't your responsibility. Her actions are not your responsibility. You need to get away from her. Get some therapy for yourself. Do not speak to your abuser. You need time to heal. She is a lost cause. You need to stop kaling yourself to try to fix her. It's done. You need to focus on yourself now. She was uncomfortable with me having the default female Google Assistant that she demanded I change it to a male voice. That's ducking bananas. Stop violating the row. Stop going to bars with her she shouldn't even be drinking on her meds. Stop putting the responsibility on yourself for making sure she takes said meds. Stop deluding yourself into thinking you are at fault for calling 911. You're not. This all needs to stop. Redditor 3, leave. It's already over. You tried, there is no more you can do. Except leave. Move on. For the love of the gods, stop wasting your positivity on this black hole of a person and instead use that positivity constructively with someone who deserves and appreciates you and the monumental effort you've made will always make. Redditor 4, I read your prior post, and my heart breaks for you. I know you love her and care for her, but nothing you do will ever be good enough for her. She is abusing you. Being mentally ill is no reason to act this way. I'm mentally ill, and as much as mental illness can impair my decision making and emotional responses, behavior can't be excused if it's hurting other people, either emotionally or physically. She needs help. But most of all, you need help. You need to separate yourself from her and do some healing. The fact that you are posting here tells me that you already know that this relationship isn't healthy and it runs too deep for you to figure it out on your own. You're not alone. Lean on your therapist, your friends, and your family. You need social relationships outside of your marriage. And I think you need to think about why you're in this marriage right now. Do the reasons you love her outweigh what she's doing to you? I'm sure there are domestic abuse hotlines in your area that you can call for some insight. This is domestic abuse. I'm sending you lots of love and I wish you all the best. Op answer, 
After the initial incident where she was arrested I was a mess and called a few of the counseling hotlines and did some of the walk in mental health clinics. I broke down feeling like a failure, that I let her down in doing more to get her help sooner. Whenever I would bring up the topic of abuse she would swing it back at me saying I was emotionally abusive since I was slow to respond when I was at work and that she had nothing to do at home. My therapist said that I was more codependent in the relationship. I've seen the term before and only did a cursory search when trying to figure out her headspace. Tonight I will write up a list of why I am in this marriage right now and compare it with what has happened. Redditor 5, she was uncomfortable with me having the default female Google Assistant, that she demanded I change it to a male voice. That female Google Assistant voice is pretty damn provocative though, no. At any rate, you really need to leave this situation entirely. This goes beyond unhealthy to being unsafe. Op answer, late at night sometimes I stay awake lusting after the Google Assistant. I dream of the day she can whisper to me I don't know how to help with that yet as I caress the plastic, velvet-like curves of her speaker body.